Good afternoon. I'm Julie Broughton. It is 1235. This is Take 6. We're so happy that you're joining us today. If you haven't been with us before here on Take 6, this is when we get together after our new newscast and we talk a little bit more with some of the people right here in our newsroom about what we're working on that you'll see on News 6 later today. So we have a lot for you today. We're going to be talking to News 6 anchor Lisa Bell. She has a breaking update for you on a story she previously did about EpiPens and concerns some parents have about staff not being able to administer those EpiPens in an emergency. But first, we're going to get to New Six investigator Mike Holfeld, who we always love to chat with. And he has a story coming up today. And Mike, I was just reading this and I was really surprised about this topic. You are talking about rolled back odometers, and there are thousands of these cars on our roads. And so, really, this is a warning for anyone in the market for a used car. I'm going to date myself when I tell you this because uh, I worked in Detroit for 15 years. And when we did this story back in Detroit, they actually were able to roll the numbers back the old fashioned way. Yeah. And the way the car companies had it set so we knew we weren't getting ripped off was there was an ink pad there. So if you mm. look at it and they tried to move it back, the ink pad would cover the numbers and you knew it was not real. The numbers wow. had been doctored, if you will. Okay. So let's fast forward to 21st century. I want to show you some video we have. I call it electronic sleight of hand. Mm. This happens, watch this. We're yeah, going to shave off 80,000 yeah. miles in a click. Watch this. Boom. Done. Wow. That's how easy it is. And you know what? The device used to do that is legal because it's used in diagnostics by mechanics. So I have this video here because you can see, look, mm -hmm. I can buy the device online. It's perfectly legal. It's my fancy word, legit. Okay. And so I'm warning people because you said there's thousands. I mean, it's staggering how many cars are out there right now. Let me just check my notes. I think we're at 85,000 vehicles in Florida, 19,000 in Orlando alone. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about used vehicles, vans, cars, trucks, and that a little electronic sleight of hand is easy with the device. Julie, as you saw there, you can buy it online for what, 250 bucks and boom, you, 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 you shave back all the miles. Yeah, and I know so many people are in the market for a used car. You can get better deals on used cars. How do you know that what you're getting is, or what you're paying for is what you actually you know, think you're getting? Yeah, the, the, the telltale sign, let's say you get a car and it has 20,000 miles on it, according to the odometer. Take that car to a mechanic. It might cost you 400 bucks or so for a complete overhaul, if you will, a diagnostic check, pull the wheels off and so forth. But the wear and tear is the true story, and that's what you really need to do. The second thing that, that you can do, and it's a lot less expensive, is go to Carfax, and I'm going to have that on the report tonight. They will give you the free information on your VIN number. What's that? Mm -hmm. That's the vehicle identification number. It's 17 characters, numbers and letters. You can see it on the driver's side of your dashboard. That intel given to Carfax will allow them to tell you what the odometer was step by step by oh. step. And if somebody doctored with it, in other words, they had an oil filter change and it was at 35000 and all of a sudden it's back 10000 hmm, something's not right. And it can cost you a lot of money. You know, on average, drivers, consumers are losing $4,000 per vehicle on this little sleight of hand thing. The older the car, you know what? You're going to lose a lot more. And you don't want to get sucker punched like that. So that's why we're yeah. get, getting the story out here. And I did this a few years ago, too, but I think people tend to forget they figure that's accurate. There's no way it's mm -hmm. digital. There's no way they can fool with it. But as we we just showed you, Julie, it's easy. It's unbelievable. You can buy one of these devices and do it in seconds. Yeah, I mean, just how fast. I mean, you had the real-time video. It was almost instantaneous. And I had no idea that you could hop on Amazon, buy these devices, and that they're legal to have because obviously they're used for you know legal purposes too. But this is something that I just really was unaware that it was such a problem. Well, I didn't realize the numbers had jumped so much. That's why we wanted to get back on and, and tell our viewers about this. Because when you're looking at 85,000 vehicles out there right now, does that mean they're all out there potentially to buy? Uh, it could be. And then you could get stuck with it. You know, it may say one thing and it's hiding the truth because of that little electronic sleight of hand that I described to you. And you saw it. So the best thing to do is check the wear and tear. Go to Carfax and, and you can go to... the clickorlando.com. I've got the information there as well. Make sure the numbers you're seeing are the true numbers and not mm -hmm. some magic trick because it could uh, cost us all a lot of money, Julie. Good advice. We don't want that. You're always looking out for us, Mike Holfeld. We love it. <laughs> I try.
<laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Your story airs at 6. I think it's at 5.30 today. Oh, 5.30. See, look yeah. at me. Okay, yes. Yeah, so 5.30. We all have it. And, of course, be on clickorlando.com as well. Thank you so much, Mike Holfeld. Thanks, Julie. Good seeing you. Good to see you. All right, and as we mentioned at the top of the show, we're also chatting, chatting with New Six anchor Lisa Bell as well. You may remember she was telling us a few months ago about a parent who came to her and had concerns about the use of EpiPens in schools and whether staff there were appropriately trained to administer those EpiPens in case of an emergency. She's been following the story along, and Lisa, I just got back from a shoot, and I walked up, and you told me that you have a breaking news update that we're going to have on News 6 at 4. So what is going on with this? Yeah, so unfortunately, it's not good news for her. Um, let me take you back. In November, we introduced you to Sherry Isler and her six-year-old son, Lincoln. He's adorable, but he suffers from food allergies. As a result, he has an EpiPen. She signs him up for school at Aloma Elementary in Winter Park, which, of course, is run by Orange County Public Schools, signs him up for the aftercare program. And because she is a nurse practitioner, because she's a mom of a child with severe food allergies, she does what she always does, and she asks the people there, hey, he has an EpiPen. Uh, just want to make you aware of that. Where will they be stored? You know, he knows how to administer it himself, but what is your protocol? And she said at the time, the people kind of looked at her like, uh, we don't know what you're talking about. We cannot administer any sort of medication. We're not trained on how to do that. And she immediately went into a panic. And she said, you know, her child is in kindergarten. He needs assistance with that. They're having snacks there mm -hmm. um, in the aftercare program, and you never know what can happen. He needs this life-saving medication. So fast forward to now, since then, Orange County Public Schools has mandated that all personnel, uh, or at least most of the personnel in the after-school programs and the before-school programs are trained on how to administer an EpiPen, and also kids will have access to their life-saving medication. But she wants this to be statewide wide. Um, and so she has partnered with some local lawmakers, including uh, Senator Linda Stewart and House Representative Rita Harris to uh, come up with this new legislation that would require after school programs be trained on how to administer an EpiPen. It would require districts statewide to adopt an anaphylaxis policy and at least 50% of the staff in the before and after care programs would have to be trained. Also, uh, just school staff in general, uh, appropriate school staff is how it's worded would have to be trained on how to do this so the bill is now in tallahassee unfortunately bills in this state must go three through three committees and be passed in three committees before they can go to the full house or the full senate for a vote this has been referred to three committees but none of those committees has put it on their agenda to be heard. So as of right now, the bill appears to be stalled. I've reached out to Sherry Isler, the mom in this case. Um, she is ready and willing to go to Tallahassee to talk with lawmakers, to talk to them about the importance of this bill. She has been extremely involved uh, in this measure for some time now and has so many stats and she has so many stories of kids who have unfortunately passed away because oh they did not get their EpiPen in time mm -hmm. um, or at all. And so she knows the importance of this and she thinks it's pretty standard. Also, she notes that this training is relatively short and free. Mm -hmm. It's about 10 minutes, she says. That's all people need to, to uh, go through in order to understand how to administer an EpiPen. So who knows? It could still be brought up. The uh, legislative session just began on Tuesday. We're now closing out the first week of the legislative session. It runs uh, for 60 days into March, so it could be brought back up. But right now, we just spoke with uh, Representative Harris yesterday and she tells us that unfortunately this bill is not being placed on any agendas which mm. has to happen in order for it to become long um, lisa that is not so that's the update, the update. yeah so no, that's yeah. certainly not the update that this mom wanted and you know like you said this is life or death for so many kids so hopefully and when you meet that little six-year-old Yes, and that's what you're t dealing with. You know, he's six years old. He knows how to administer the EpiPen himself, but he's scared because it's a needle. Yeah. And so it's helpful to have adults nearby who can assist him. Um, and not only that, you know, what if she keeps an EpiPen at the school, but it's in the nurse's office. And that is completely locked up, at least it was at the time, from where the after school program was taking place. So they couldn't even access the EpiPen even if he wanted to administer it himself. So this bill works to change all of that, but as of right now, it appears like it's not going anywhere. 
All right, Lisa. Well, I know you'll have more on this for us coming up on News 6 at 4. Yeah, we'll see you then. All right. We also want to get a check of your weather. It is just a gray, drizzly day out there. We were anticipating this. I know I was with you last night on News 6 at 11. I said, hey, keep in mind, you're going to have a wet morning commute. Trooper Steve and Candace were there this morning helping to navigate you through that. And we are seeing still some showers. We're getting a little bit of a break in some of that rain, but you see, see there on the radar scanning out for us. Much of Volusia County scenes and pockets of pretty heavy rain that extends back into northern Lake County as well as all these showers lift to the north out ahead of a warm front. Now I just got back from a shoot into Varys a little while ago and while we were driving there we were noticing it was very foggy, reduced visibility. That is still the case in a lot of spots. In Leesburg your visibility is at two miles. It's at three miles in Sanford, four miles officially in Orlando. If you are up in the Daytona Beach area and you have to be heading out anytime, keep in mind you will run into some areas of reduced visibility down to two miles, five miles in New Smyrna Beach and six miles in Ocala. Temperatures are a little bit warmer than we've seen the last couple of days. A warm front is lifting to the north. That's bringing us winds from the south. It is 72 right now in Orlando. Melbourne is 78, 73 in Cocoa Beach and Cape Canaveral, and 66 in the villages. Now, here's a look at how the rest of our day plays out. We are going to be watching. This is the clouds and rain forecast, so this is showing us some model data. We're stopping the clock for you at midnight. We're watching a cold front. That front is dropping to the south out ahead of that. You'll see those areas of yellow, red, and orange. That shows us where we can see some pockets of heavy rain, as well as some isolated strong to severe storms. This is not going to be a redo of Saturday. We're not talking about widespread extended severe weather, but again, we could see some of those isolated severe storms by five o'clock tomorrow morning. That line continues moving to the south, but still in parts of southern Volusia County and in northern Brevard County, seeing some of that rain from Orlando down through areas like Bithlow and Christmas and then down toward Yeehaw Junction. Also seeing some of that. That front gets to our south by around 9, 10 o'clock. Behind that, we see our winds shifting out of the north. And Sunday, I think we will be mostly dry. And by Sunday afternoon, I do think that we will see some areas of sunshine. So as far as outdoor plans this weekend, I think Sunday is probably your best bet. I know a lot of you probably have the holiday off on Monday. We'll see some showers moving in on Monday as well. Here's how all this shapes up for you in your next seven days. So again, that severe storm icon, that is for Friday night into Saturday morning. So the overnight hours, isolated severe storm. 65 for your high tomorrow, 67 on Sunday. We're watching another cold front that comes through on Tuesday. That brings with it some rain, but I want you to look at the morning temperatures for Wednesday and Thursday. We will start in the 30s those days, so we are talking about some of the coldest air of the season. Wednesday, a high only of 52 degrees. Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells is back. He's been off the last few days, but we're so happy he will be with us again today on News 6, starting at 4 and taking you through the evening hours with some of those stronger storms. So he will have the full breakdown of all of this for you. Lisa Bell, Ginger Gaston, and I will also see you on News 6 starting at 4. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you have any questions or comments for us here at Take 6, head to clickorlando.com slash take 6. Let us know what's on your mind, and I will see you at 4.